I made a video about proving you're human in one word, and then everyone decided that I wasn't. <laughs> Last week, I asked you if you were paired against a robot and you had one word to convince a judge that you're human, what would you choose? Many of you had brilliant answers, words that were quite convincing. But ironically, in a 20 minute video, I couldn't convince many of you of the same. I failed the Turing test. I failed to prove that I'm human. My lighting, my face, my background, my voice, all under scrutiny, all taken to be signs that I'm artificially generated. And honestly, it stuck with me. Not because I was offended by any of you calling me AI, I tried to take it as a compliment, but because it made me wonder what are we looking for when we decide that something feels human? And maybe more importantly, how can you tell when something isn't? This isn't just about me being accused of being a robot. It's about the fact that we're all swimming in AI-generated content right now. Images, essays, even emotional posts. And half the time, we can't tell. The truth is, our instincts for detecting humanness were never built for something quite like this. And if you're like me, that's a little unnerving. But I don't think it means we're hopeless. I think there's something we can learn here. So today, I wanna to share with you, number one, why we misjudge what's human. Number two, the science behind that uncanny feeling. And number three, how to spot the telltale signs of what has been called AI slop the synthetic thought patterns of a machine trying to sound human. So here's what happened. After my minimal Turing test video went up, the comment section was split into two camps. The majority of you had fascinating ideas about what it means to seem human. But there was a minority of you who thought that I wasn't. People analyzed my micro expressions, my script pacing, my video editing. So it's incredibly jarring to be accused of being AI, to think about the possibility that you're not human. But I think what was even weirder about it is that I looked back on that video, I watched it again, and I can kind of understand why they thought that. Because I was optimizing my delivery, my phrasing, my pacing, even my transitions, which I'm still working on, so don't be too critical yet. But I was trying to do this in the pursuit of being clear and concise and logical. Basically, I was trying to be machine readable. But remember that a lot of LLMs are based on papers and articles and other published works that are also clear and concise and logical. And somewhere along the way, I crossed the line between polished human and plausible Android. It was absolutely fascinating. So of course I had to start digging into what actually makes this feel so uncanny. The signs of the uncanny. The uncanny valley hypothesis was proposed by Masahiro Mori in 1970, over half a century ago now. He noticed that as robots became more human-like, our emotional comfort with them increased until it didn't. At a certain point, things get a little too close. But I think most of us are familiar with this visual likeness. We like dogs and cats, things with two eyes and two arms and two legs over something like a spider. They really tend to creep us out. But what's more interesting to me is how these subtle behavioral changes affect our comfort. When robots looked nearly human, but moved just a little wrong, people felt uneasy, even repulsed. There were robots made that had the same number of facial controls as humans have muscles to be able to properly recreate facial expressions. But they discovered that these robots still have that non-human quality about them, which was attributed to the order of and the speed at which these controls were actuated. It's why something like a slow smile is so unnerving. When that creepy character in a horror movie smiles and their eyes don't pinch at the corners, it feels unnatural and we are amazing at picking up on it. That is the uncanny valley. And the same thing happens now with AI generated content. It's not that it's bad. It's that it's 
almost right. It's hair that doesn't interact with gravity the way that we would expect. It's a hand with four fingers. It's a flat skin tone. It's not that it's bad, per se. It's that it's almost right. It's hair that doesn't interact with gravity the way that we would predict. It's hands with four fingers on them. It's someone whose face has just a really flat, dull skin tone. It imitates something natural. It mimics that human warmth, but it misses that lived texture underneath. I won't go into full depth on the Turing test again. If you want a deeper dive, feel free to go watch that last video. I'll link it somewhere. But as a refresher, the psychologists studying the minimal Turing test found something really fascinating. When asked for a word to prove that they were human, people weren't responding with things like logic and reason. They were responding with love and soul and compassion. And our community responded pretty similarly. Humans don't detect humanness in intelligence or what they called agency. We detect it in imperfections or experience. We pick up on these tiny signals of feeling. It's in uncertainty. It's in hesitation. It's in the ability to proclaim, I don't know. AI slop, on the other hand, gives you fluency with no friction. It is eerily certain about what it says. Every sentence knows exactly where it's going. And I think that's the problem. Think about when you meet someone who never hesitates or contradicts themselves, never pauses to think of an answer, right? You don't find them relatable. You kind of find them suspicious. And machines do this all the time. So how can we spot it then? This past week, and all the comments I've received since and all the deep dives I've done have taught me a lot. And I think I have a little bit of insight now. So here are some things to look for. And no, it's not just counting fingers. These will be new tips for you to implement. Number one is surface level empathy. AI generated writing mirrors emotional language without genuine vulnerability, right? It can name feelings without actually revealing them. Number two is redundancy masked as rhythm. AI loves reiterating the same point with new phrasing over and over again while adding nothing, no value. It sounds coherent, but if you strip away the flourish, the way it strings together these beautiful metaphors, it's just empty repetition. It generally has one purpose behind it, and that is to mimic and to answer whatever prompt it was given but not to add value. Number three is over-optimization. AI will use perfect grammar and perfect cadence, and it takes zero risk. Therefore, AI slop avoids tension, avoids contradiction, and avoids failure, which are all things that make human thought interesting. We saw this in our comments. People were willing to be silly and vulnerable and sometimes offensive right? And we concluded that AI would just not do this. Number four is emotional mimicry without a narrative grounding. It might say grief without referencing what it lost. It might say love without having a person attached to it, right? It tries to be broadly appealing without being grounded. And number five, is the absence of surprise. If you're having any sort of original thought, I guarantee that you are surprising yourself while you're speaking. We're making things up as we go, all the time. The whole time I've been recording here, I've been starting sentences without knowing where I'm going with them or how I'm gonna stick the landing. I'm just constantly caught off guard with what I say. And don't get me wrong, I know that AI is well known for just making things up, but it's never caught off guard. And that is the tell. We're entering a world where the majority of the content that we consume may soon be machine generated and optimized for 
retention and engagement, but not empathy or connection. And the danger isn't just that AI will fool us, right? It's already doing this. That's why I'm giving you some tips here. But I think there's also a danger that we're gonna just stop caring whether it does. If everything sounds smart and clear and coherent, I think we're at risk of forgetting that the real markers of thought are the flaws. They're the false starts and the pauses and the connecting of dots. So if you want to prove that you're human online or in a Turing test or anywhere, take it from me. <laughs> Don't try to polish yourself into oblivion. Be a little clumsy and ask questions that you can't answer and leave traces of uncertainty. Because in the age of AI, imperfection is proof of life. So if you've ever been mistaken for a robot, or if you've ever been scrolling and found something that just felt a little bit off, I'd like to hear you tell me what gave it away. Maybe together we can come up with a new kind of Turing test, one designed for the age of AI slop. Or maybe that's just wishful thinking. Either way, thanks for being here and take care of yourself.